Hello. Hi, hi, everyone. Okay, it's me again, Kathleen from the Zenner team. And today we'll do something um, easier than usual. Not too many sketching that needs to be done for this one. But um, we'll be focusing more on layering all the beautiful colors um, that we need to get the nice um, rounded shape of the pair. Okay, so for, um, for anything that's um, three-dimensional, if you want it to come out three-dimensional instead of illustrative, illustrative, you really want to layer so you can slowly get to the uh, shaping of your um, form. All right, so today it's pairs, and um, if you didn't get the chance to catch it, um, I shared the two reference photos. Um, there are two pairs in one photo, so you can just print j just the one. Um, and there are two kinds of pairs, one that's more on the um, bright yellow, a greenish um, side, and one that's already having some orange tones to it. So um, pairs come in that um, color range, so it's good to try both. Okay, so now um, I'll just show you quickly um, the reference photo that I mentioned. Again, you will find it um, there, here in the event itself, I shared the photos. So these are the two pairs that um, we will be working on. So you will also see me sketch them today because um, it's just easy to sketch, so it won't take so much time. Okay, so let's start. I'll start by showing, again, the reference photo. I'll have it here to the side, um, but when you do your own, you can always just print this out or have it in your phone beside you for um, as a guide. Okay, so um, usually I like to sketch with um, a 2B or 3B um, so that I can still see what I'm working on. Up to you. So I'll do this on the top part of my work so I can still use the lower part for other fruits that I might want to use uh, to work on. Okay, so I picked these photos because they're not too hard. So it's basically, if you simplify this, it's basically a triangle and a circle together or more of an oval and then you uh, connect the two. Okay, and the, the one below, um, it's not just a straight line, there's a curve right here. So make sure to add that because getting the shape not too perfect is actually what we're aiming for. Okay, and as usual, if you don't want your lines to show through after, um, go over it with your eraser. So I'm just now fixing the shape that it's rounded and not like squished. Okay, so this one is also is angled diagonally towards the other side. Okay. So sketching is done, and as you can see, really uh, quick, and uh, it looks like a pair, and okay, I'm good to go. All right, so I'll be using two colors from two palettes. Uh, I'm not sure yet if I will actually, but for sure, um, I just have them ready as usual, just in case I will do need to use. Okay, so I'll definitely need... Um, for this um, lemon yellow okay again if you look at the reference it looks just like it's just green but in my case if you've you know attended any of my other classes I do like to layer a lot so that's what I do I will layer 
Okay, so um, choose the brush size that's right for you. Um, I'll try to use a chunkier brush today, a bigger brush. I think this is a number 10. And if you like to really mix, then you can also have your mixing plate. Okay, so let me just wet my yellow. Okay, so this is lemon. Okay, let's, let me move this down here. This is lemon yellow right here. So we'll start with this pair. Okay, this is just maybe two to three layers. Okay, so what I'll do now um, is I'll go around here. I'll try to leave um, very pale areas right here. Okay, so let me just go around like so because there's highlights here. The light is here, so I have some very soft highlights on this side. So what I'll do is I'll just go around it like so. I'm applying the yellow with much saturation down here. And then I will now wet my tip of my brush and just pull the color inward towards the highlight and even lift some areas off. And here too. So I'm just painting around the highlight that I need to have. But then it's not just a big white thing. So I'm also slowing uh, slowly bringing some of the yellow in but being very careful so I don't cover all the white all right very quick and easy first layer is done all right, so now, um, because of course, I don't have the luxury of uh, waiting for a while before I go back, I'm now going to use a blow dryer. But I really suggest that if you're not in a hurry, just um, allow for things to dry naturally because they do, they will still move around a bit on the paper. And, some, and you also want that effect, you know, the natural effect of watercolor. that that's enough I just want it to be at least dryish so that I don't move the layers okay and um, now I'm going to use this just lovely green right here this aureoling green it's uh, when you swatch out it looks like this so it's actually perfect for the pear I'm going to mix it with a lemon yellow okay so I you always want a light yellow that's on the cooler side so you can have um, lemon yellow or um, any transparent yellow because it will come in handy when you need to paint um, subjects like this that have a brighter tone sometimes um, well not just sometimes if you use a warm yellow you won't be able to get this like almost neony green okay so again I will start with this green from down here okay this is the area with the deeper let me add some more. It's too light. And again, if you're not sure of your mixture, um, get your swatch card and just swatch it so you can see if you like the color that you mixed. Okay, so start at the bottom. Because for um, softly changing the color from deeply saturated to pale this is what I like to do I apply it where it's heavily saturated and then I just pull it outwards upwards by adding water to my brush slowly 
Okay, I, now it's the time I dip the tip of my brush and from the edge, bring the color ports. Again, dip, just the tip. If you remove too much pigment, then it will be too pale. So just, it's up to your judgment, depending on how pigmented your paints are. Okay, again, dip. And when it dries and you feel like it's still too pale, you can add another layer. Okay, so now I'm rinsing off the paint from my brush and just this is just a damp brush. Okay, so again, I'm leaving the highlight. Okay, you want that with pears and apples. They need to have this shine on them because they have a very smooth, um, shiny skin. So you'd really need to have some highlight in there. Okay, so let me just add more green here. I try not to overwork it because as you keep on going back and forth the areas um you if especially if the paint is not yet dry you will keep on moving this the earlier strokes that you did and sometimes it will just end up being messy so just stop yourself and um allow the layer to dry and then you can always add another on top okay so again with the blow dryer Now it's uh, another layer of green. Okay, so same green uh, that we already have here, the Oriolin. I'm still going to add lemon yellow. Okay, and now let's add a bit of this um, olive green. We'll add this slowly because I don't want to dull the green too much but I want it to be a bit darker okay and I will also add a dash of thalo blue again I will do this slowly because thalo blue can be quite strong okay I'm just creating a deeper green that's still a bit vibrant but um, not too dull okay let me add a bit more blue so I use thalo blue because it's also a, a cool blue so that I can get the darker shade but without killing the vibrancy of the green. Okay, so again, test the colors, the color that you have. Okay, and remember some colors are more on the transparent side. So unless you um, really use a lot of them, they will come out um very transparent which is perfect for fruits like this where you want all the layers under to still show in the top layer again still from the bottom and there's actually a bit of um, highlight here so let's do that later with um, lifting and if we can't lift what we want then we can always add white after okay so even when I'm doing my strokes I'm following the shape of the fruit okay that's really what I do um, wh whether I'm doing feathers or hair or fruit or petals as much as possible the strokes that you do try to follow the shape of what your painting that way it won't come out weird so even if the strokes are quite visible um, it looks natural because you're following the shape of the fruit okay so that's the the one thing that will really help you out a lot okay so even if it's very textured as long as it follows the shape then you're good If you don't like a textured work, personally, I like textured. <laughs> I like working in text in a very textured way. That's my preference. But if you don't, 
then you'd probably want to do this um, wet and wet. But in my case, I want the texture because it really adds to the interest to the work. And as usual, as you can see, I'm softening the edges so that it just blends beautifully instead of being a chunk of dark shape here. Okay, and if the surface is still wet and you add extra pigment, it will still flow. So I'm doing that because I feel like I need more shadow right here. But just do it slowly. And again, try not to overwork. Okay, so here, this is not so like just one round thing. So I'm going to add more green here. So this is the part where you try to fix the shape. And again, dip your brush, soften the edge, bring some of the color in, not too much. Again, you want to keep the highlight. And some paints are also quite granulating. So again, get acquainted with your paints and see their characteristics so that before you choose to use it, you are well prepared because you might be looking for a like um, a very um, smooth application and if your paints are grainy are granulating then you won't be able to achieve that but then if you're more into the granulating style then it's not a problem so again it's all a matter of preference so just really get to know your paints okay so as you can see, it's now three-dimensional. You have your highlight, your light areas, your mid-tones, and then your darker areas. So you will just need to add the shadows and the texture um, later. And we'll leave that for last when everything is um, fully dry. Now let's add some brown here. So it's actually a, um, a bit of a warm brown, but not too warm like this so I will mix burnt shenna and burnt umber I will wait for this to dry and then see if I want to remove some paint later if I feel like it's too much but right now when it's still wet you can already lift some parts off if you want or soften okay, let me just switch brushes using the same brown I'm now going to fill in the stock as well So that's the first layer. I'll leave that and we can now go to the next pair. Okay, so this is um, three layers and you can already get this three dimensional effect. So I think that's uh, the usual with me. I paint at least three layers if I'm doing a more realistic painting style. Okay, now let's go to the next pair. So this one, let me just again show you quickly. This is this one. It now three and six okay you like to work smaller <laughs> okay so now it's more of um yellow turning into um a yellow orange orange but i actually see some hints of very pale green so um, we can add that here and there but we'll also start with lemon yellow okay so let's do that let's go for our lemon yellow And we also have highlights here, but smaller. Okay, so 
the highlights are here. One, two, three. So you can also already draw around the highlight if you're not sure. Or you can use a masking fluid if you really want to preserve them. Okay, so in my case, I draw around like so. If it's a tiny, tiny pinprick of white, usually I just add gouache after or... I use a masking fluid for it. Okay, so you can do that. It's acceptable. It's still considered watercolor if you don't you didn't overuse your gouache. Okay, so just really going around with the lemon yellow. So having the lemon yellow as your base first layer. It really uh, allows the colors that you add on top of it to pop. Okay, so, but of course, that's only if it's a really cool, vibrant color. So just refer to your reference photo or your whichever, whichever subject you're painting. It's not always going to be lemon yellow. If it's on the warmer side, of course, you should go for um, Hansa yellow or New Cambodge. Okay, so again, I'm not too hung up on making it so smooth. I'm just making sure that um, it's not too, what do you call this? It's not too white and sharp etched. So you can also actually lift some of the color if you feel like you filled it too much. So I'm just going to dip this filbert brush and just swirl it around this circle just to soften the area around the highlight so it's not a hard-edged white. Lemon yellow is fairly easy to lift since it's more on the transparent side. Okay, so now I've got softer white. I like it and now let's go for our um, deeper yellow so I will use um, Hansa yellow right here from the um, Sereno palette okay so I don't want to go warm too warm yet I'm going for this mid yellow okay so it's quite dry just reawaken your paint So this is a nice mid yellow perfect. Okay, so Hansa yellow, one of my favorite yellows. It's quite similar to cadmium yellow. Okay, so I'm going to go all over again. Just layer layering it over the lemon. Dipping my brush and then allowing the yellow to become lighter as it goes towards this area where there your highlight is okay so when you see the highlight you already know that the areas around it will be on the light side okay so it's usually highlight light medium so you can see i'm just really painting around the highlight you can always cover some of it later if you feel like it's too big or it's too much. You can just glaze over it with a light, very pale lemon yellow. And it will still look like a, the highlight against all the other deeper tones. Okay, and now I'm going to use my blow dryer just to dry this before I add the sheen of um, green that I see. Very um, small hints here and there. So this will take at least two other layers. Okay, so let's now go for the hint of green that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to use um, Oriolin Green with um, some lemon yellow for that. OK, 
Okay, so just very pale. So I see it here. And then a bit also here. Okay, so it's nice to include these even though it's just barely there because it's just showing you how the fruit progressed from this to um, having a more orange tone, a warmer tone. It's just like when painting autumn and you still see some of the leaves that are still green. Some uh, greenery is still there but the colors are also starting to yellow and orange and reddish brown and brown okay so just a hint but all of these together will really um, help um, br uh, bring it to life now let's go to our um, orange okay so our orange um, has a really nice color to it so I'm going to use um, Hansa yellow so I really, when I make my mixtures, I try to use um, my colors together. Um, it really brings it all together instead of just jumping around and using something else. Um, something completely not in your palette. Okay, so uh, I also suggest if you're not sure to swatch your colors out, try them out um, in your sketchbook or your journal and see um, what uh, colors you want to use when you paint the pair uh, or you can just uh, use the colors that I used and whatever similar colors you have and now I'm going to go for scarlet right here because this is a warm red that's perfect for creating a very vibrant orange that's on the warmer side okay so I'll I have this mixture I think it's correct but again you can always swatch it out to see Okay, so I'm starting with this orange and I will just add more, another layer later, if I feel like it's too light. Okay, so I have light here. This is the section where it is very intense. And I'm doing this shape around the, the sh oval shape down here. And before things start to dry, I'm now going to dip my brush and soften the edges. Okay, because once it starts to dry, this will all have a hard edge. So you have to work quickly when you're doing this technique. But if your paper is um, more forgiving, then it will also give you more time. And if it's cotton, it will also allow you to scrub it if it's if it has hard lines. Okay, so this is my first layer of orange. I'm trying to make it reach here. Oh, I'm glad you're able to join. Hope you find it useful. And I hope you try it out. Pears are actually one of the good fruits to start with when painting, because sketching wise, it's really very easy. And also for you can really appreciate the beauty of watercolor when painting pears. As you can see, the layering is just wonderful. Okay, so, but barely any orange going towards this side. So also control how much you allow to flow. Okay, so all about water control. You will see me go back and forth like that towards my um, jar of water. Okay, and I will now start from the bottom. It's actually very pale, but I want, it, I want it to be more vibrant. So in my case, I'm allowing it to be a bit more orange than the reference. So you can do make you can make changes like this. Okay, if you want. Again, it is your own choice and what you want to include in your work. That's the magic of painting. You don't have to create a photograph finish.
And now I'm going to dry this and add an even deeper um, orange for this area. So same color, um, Hansa yellow and scarlet. But now um, I'm adding more paint so it's more saturated. And then add it to the areas where it's darkest. So be careful. You don't want it to be too much and just overwhelm everything. So it's just the right amount of orange. And as usual, um, I will thin this. Okay, so just dip again and starting from the edge, bring it outwards. If it's too dark still, then remove as much pigment as you can from your brush. And if you remove too much, you can always add from your mixture. So again, it's all about making the right judgments. If it's too wet, wipe it off. If it's too light, add some more pigment. And if you feel like um, you're just not going anywhere good, um, just finish that layer and just wait for it to dry and then do what you need to do on the next layer. Okay, so that's the magic of watercolor. You can do layers and layers. And unlike oil, it doesn't take days to dry. Okay, so I will add just some hint of orange here. I just really like to balance things. Okay, so my highlight is preserved and it really adds to the um, effect of the pear having a um, smooth skin. Okay, and then using just the same um, brown that I used for this, I'm going to apply my first layer right here. If this is not dry, make allow this to dry because otherwise this wet will spread to this wet and this will turn brown, which you don't want. I'm also adding here, but um, this is a bit on the darker brown side. So I'm going to add more burnt umber to the mixture. Okay, so now I'm going to get my tiny brush and use that to add lines here. Okay, so when you layer, unless you want the, the paint to spread to the wet areas, um, then you wait for it to dry and before you add your new layer. So I'm going to do the same here, just burnt umber for the darker areas right here. You also need to layer your stem so that it doesn't look flat against the nice roundness of your pear. It is also rounded, so you must also show that it's rounded. So you also have to do the layering. for here okay so don't discount your other small areas small parts like this you also have to suggest that it's rounded so now we can now work on the dots okay so for this you have to take your time and be patient 
and choose the right brush okay so um, let me just get my brushes okay so these are detail brushes okay let me see so I'm going to go for my two over zero round because it's quite springy so I can do the dots with more control okay but before that um, I will need to create my mixture okay, so I will use this one Okay, mixed in with a little phthalo blue. Okay, so once you have your mixture ready, then you can get your brush and add your dots. Okay, just make sure everything is dry so you don't smudge things. And, okay, let me just move this. And put this here so it's near. Okay. And then do your dots. Okay, so control. Um do your hold your um brush like this and dab like that. Okay, not at an angle but more um almost straight vertical. Okay. Um start from the bottom and they are darker. Okay, so don't space it too evenly. Okay, and take your time and dot with control because if you dot too quickly, it will turn into dashes instead. And it's not going to look nice. Okay, so take your time. You can always rest and continue it another time. So I'm starting down here because the dots are darker. And I'll add water later as I go towards here and make the dots lighter. Okay, and add dots to the edges. Okay, so it doesn't look weird. The dots are just congregating above the edge, even to the edge. Okay, let's add a bit more water now for the lighter dots. Okay, so here I'm adding more water, so I'm just doing lighter dots. So as it goes towards here where there's more light, it will also be lighter. So even the highlights will have dots, okay? They're just on the lighter side. So apply the dots everywhere else. And when it's like almost gone, then go towards the center and add the dots. And they will be very light and perfect. And there you go. Now we will add the darker dots. So I will use some burnt shenna added with the green. Okay, I'm still going to mix it with the green so it's not like an off sudden shenna, but it's like green with a dash of brown. Okay, and now I'm going to start again from the bottom and add it here and there. So it's not too much, okay? It doesn't go all over. You just see it speckled here and there. So just look at your reference and try to see where they are and add them.
Okay, I like it. I'm happy with it. Um, and if, again, you want to do the highlight there, you can just use a hard brush and just lift it off. So here I can lift off some paint just to add the highlight. Or you can always um, use white gouache, white ink, and add white for the highlight. But I find that lifting off the paint gives you the nice soft highlight that's just perfect. Okay, so just lift it with a damp, a damp, clean brush and wipe it in your paper towel. And do this as many times as needed. Okay, and there you go. Now let's go to the other one. Um, we will now also add the dots. So for this one, I'm going to use this green. Let's just add a bit of just to soften the the brightness a tad okay so this is oriole in green with some lemon yellow and some um olive green okay and we'll do the same thing we'll add dots um starting from here this is where the darkest dots are so since i'm sorry since this is more on the yellow side this shade of green is perfect for the dots if you use this kind of green here, it's going to look too dark. Okay, so for, for doing your dots, a nice springy brush with a firm tip is essential. So don't use a floppy brush for this because you will get floppy, you will not get circles. Or if you do, you it will be a much harder experience than it should be. So in this case, the green is just perfect. This shade of green, it doesn't overwhelm the yellow and the orange. And again, don't forget to add it here as well, even on the highlights. It's just watered down when you reach the highlights, okay? The dots don't disappear, they just become lighter. And there you go. Okay, so now we'll just uh, look at it and just add the finishing touches like um, I see some shadowing over here and there. And that's what we do. Okay, so let's add the shadow here. Okay, using this color that we still have. Okay, and then dipping our brush in water and pulling the color outwards. Then you get your nice soft shadow. Okay, and do it here as well on the other side. And you can always add the bottom later for the surface. It, it's up to you um, what color you want for your surface but you can just go for a neutral color blue or brown uh, what's that sorry doing the dots and point ruin the pointiness uh, it stays pointy if it's a firm brush okay so um, it's good to have a usually synthetic brushes are perfect for this so this, it, as you can see, I've used this a lot already, and it keeps its point. And you, when you do these kinds of points, you don't really 
dip uh, do this to your brush don't you know stab it it's just really dip dip just a tip so it it keeps its shape okay but of course if you used it probably a thousand times um your brushes will eventually need to be replaced especially synthetics so uh, on that side of things um natural brush hair brushes are much sturdier for long term but if you need the springiness then you will also want some synthetics so this is a synthetic brush this is specifically from this set which is all detail brushes this is the fine line okay so i do i do use them a lot for little details like this because they are quite um useful and i don't need to um i don't need to do so much control imagine if i used a round brush and just used the tip it would be so much harder Okay, so I'm also going to add some shadows here. For that, I'm going to use um, this orange mixed with a bit of the burnt shanna. Okay, so again, try to have a harmonious palette instead of just using brown. Why not use burnt shanna, which we already used here, with the orange that you used for here. So instead, it becomes more natural looking okay just a bit and then just wet your brush and use the color from here just lighten it towards the rest of the pair so you just have a soft shadow and here as well okay so these reference photos are very brightly lit so that um, you will also see in the reference the cast shadow that it leaves barely here. I suggest when you do this you add a dash of um, yellow or uh, yellow orange very pale here. If your surface is white it will reflect definitely some color will reflect on it as well as here if you decide to have your surface um, pale some of this color will also reflect here okay so that's the nature of things the colors around your object will reflect on your object as well as um, the color from your object will also reflect on the surface or the objects near it okay so don't forget about that everything is in relation to one another okay so there you go. I just added the bottom and you can already see um, if you add the cast shadow, then it will be um, no longer floating. So let's do that here just quickly uh, with a smaller brush. So we'll have more um, control. Okay, so for, in this case, I'm just going to use some of the Hansa yellow right here and mix just a tad of the red, just a little bit. Okay, just very pale color right here. So the color of the fruit reflected. And since it's quite brightly lit, the cast shadow is just barely there. Okay, so again, depending on the lighting, unless the lighting is quite dramatic and just from one side, um, the shadow won't be too intense okay and I always like to soften the edges of the shadow of a cast shadow like so and then when it dries I can add a bit of blue to this to make it more of a shadow shade and here too let's um, use some of the green So the shadow on this side is also in the shape of the pear, like so. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll fade it as it goes here. Okay, 
and then I will wait for this to dry and then add another layer. Okay, so the reference photo has a very white surface. That's why your colors are very, you know, visibly reflected on the surface. But I still really like to add a, a sheen of blue on top. So for that, I'll use um, my favorite. I, I use either Prussian blue or indigo. So now let's use Prussian blue so we won't kill the colors. Okay, so let's have it here. So just a dash, not too dark. Anyway, if you find that it's too light, you can always add another layer. So there you go. You have your two pairs, easy peasy. Um, it really is. You just need to really do the layers one by one and have the patience to wait for each layer to dry or um, if you don't mind using the blow dryer or heat gun, then do so. Okay, so I hope I was able to show you clearly how to do it step by step and I'm now going to flip back to my face. So here are the two pairs. Okay, hope you can see them clearly. I like it. So you can really play around with the colors. That's why I like them. Don't forget to do the hint of green that I did because it really adds to the full finish. Okay, so thank you for joining me, everyone. And please do try doing the pairs yourself because they're really quite easy to sketch and the layering is so doable. You can totally do this. Okay, so have a nice day and I hope to see you on the next one next week because we have this weekly. All right, bye.